Welcome back, it's awesome that you're tuning in. So in this video, we are going to take a close look at the analog pockets. And I bought myself the white version from a fellow collector. I finally got my hands in one and I just really wanted to check it out because this needs to be the FPGA Game Boy, the ultimate Game Boy. If you're like a Game Boy fan, we can even play more than that. It even has the option to dog it and make this thing like an emulation beast and add yourself emulators. It's absolutely crazy or just use it like a Game Boy in docking mode. Another thing I picked up is the Game Gear adapter. It was not cheap, but I just want to have it. Then we're having an extra piece of equipment that I bought. And that is the pocket link cable. So you can use this in combination with another pocket, analog pocket. Or you can just, so far I understand, link it with a Game Boy. Okay, and then of course we're having the hard case. He gave me like a pretty damn good, good deal. So I want to have the hard case with it. And there are a lot, a lot of different goodies you can buy. <laughs> Analog makes a lot of different products, including game systems. High quality products with a hefty price tag, especially when they cannot really deliver on a fast pace. In other words, if you need to find one, you need to reserve it and wait a long time or get into the scalper jungle and get yourself one and hoping you find one there. Okay, but let's do a quick unboxing and also removing the plastic. I just waited especially for this video for making it. So this thing has been laying in my storage for some time. I just wanted to do this quick unboxing experience with you go. Yeah, it's not going to be in quick because I can't get the plastic off. Yeah, there we go. First impression is like, wow, these boxes are like really nice and premium feel. And that's the thing that they're basically aiming for, in my opinion. So the overall device, I can tell you, I loved it when he made the choice for giving it like a Game Boy look. Oh, there we go. So the first impression, this thing feels quite nice. It feels also very heavy. Later on, we'll do a quick, let's say, side-by-side -side comparison with different kind of systems. So at the front, we do have like the D-pad and the four facing buttons. I think it's pretty damn awesome. They even made the decision to have two back buttons over here. And also they feel absolutely amazing. And very interesting, like a micro switch feel, but have like a very short travel. It's crazy if you think about it. And there are like all kinds of like, plastics on here that I'm going to not removing. <laughs> The first time where you're going to get one putting up, you have the option to have a tutorial. It's absolutely great that they implement this. So what you can see, that we're having like different, let's say, functions in the machine itself that will give you like a quick overview with. Hey, by pressing start, select where the volume control is over here at the left side. Press it together to mute and hold the analog and press the volume for brightness. Yeah, that's easy indeed. If you, <laughs> I didn't know that before. Hold the analog and press the left or right to cycle. Hey, an original display mode during gameplay. Quick press power to sleep and wake. Hold it for two seconds to turn and on and off. Can you remember this back in the, let's say, 1890s when you bought your own Game Boy? No, I can't. That's kind of weird. And let's say you're more like, yeah, but it's all cool analog. You have these like things that I really don't give a shit about. You need accept yes and sell your soul. <laughs> What I do find a very interesting thing they did is having over here, like the, I'm hoping the camera picks it up, the bezel, or where you see the front glass, sticks out a little bit over here. That's interesting. At the bottom part, then we're going to get ourselves like the connection for connecting with a different device. But how about the link cable? That is another thing I really wanted to test out. And that is what we're going to do. So another interesting feature they're showing over here is that we have even having a button that says Game Boy Color or Game Boy Advance. So you know that this is just a universal cable you can use for every single system. Another thing I really like about it is the way how they de detailed, like giving you these tiny cards you can slide out with some quick explanations. All right, so let's get everything straight like it should be. This will give you like a quick comparison of the both displays. Let's see if we can play the game. There we go. Ah, I see behind Mario on the right one over here. And that works without any problem whatsoever. Different configuration. Let's get into the game itself. Let's set it to player two. Player two, start the game. But here it goes back to player one. That, see, you can, that is basically booting up, but it's completely going a wire over here. And USB-C 
for basically connecting and over here the volume control like there is so much stuff going on in this and of course you can even like add yourself and make our iz card and they're already like working on a lot of let's say different like firmwares or whatever like ways to emulate different systems so combining this with the dock you can just have like fbga technology on your television at the back we're going to find ourselves an usb hdmi the power type c a button and a usb connection again the docking itself feels kind of solid to be honest it feels very heavy and it's kind of cool and i really like it the first thing i already noticed when plugging this into this television wow the image quality looks absolutely superior of course i'm always used to these crappy chinese consoles but this thing oh boy it's the next level at the front of the docking station we're going to get ourselves the led indication that it will say when a controller has been connected but just for easy plug and play i'm using my xbox 360 controller <laughs> i'm always using that controller if i need to use an emulation machine and it's just one of those easy ways to play and I can tell you that I really enjoy myself some Tetris on the display. And yeah, I must say that I am just flabbergasted out of the overall quality when it comes to the analog pocket. The menu, I really like it. It's super easy like, to navigate through. We just have like play cartridge. Here we're having the tools, the nano loop, Game Boy Studio. Then we're having settings. And with settings, we're having the system settings. Here we can set stuff to the Game Boy, the Game Boy Color, Game Advance and Game Gear. I'm going to say then it comes here to the video, color palette, frame blending, sharpness, size position. And you can change, change out so much. It's like absolutely crazy. Super Game Boy with the controls, hardware for Game Boy mode, Game Boy color mode. It's absolutely crazy the things that we can change out with this. One of the particular things I want to check out is Game Boy Advance with video. Display mode, analog Game Boy Advance, original SP101. It's so like crazy how far you can push it when it comes to settings. Boy, holy crap. But basically entering the game is super easy. So if you want to play your Game Boy Classic game, you can just slide it in. So there is nothing basically like holding it in position like with the original Game Boy. Remember these days that you click in your game and basically this little piece of plastic Luxus system or the Game Boy game itself. But how is the overall quality? I'm gonna say that it fits in so nice. And yeah, there is maybe if you bump it accidentally or something, you, you can just easily wiggle it out. Then of course we're having the option to play different Game Boy games. Think about if you want to play some Game Boy Color, you can also do that like this. No problem whatsoever. And what I think is really cool, there we have the option for the Game Boy Advance games. But it's really cool, they can play out of the box three different kind of systems. Game Boy Classic, Color and the Game Boy Advance. But if you want to play more, you need to buy these adapters. Yeah, it's not a big of a deal. Yeah, it isn't big of a deal because they are quite expensive and difficult to find as making this video. So one of them is the Game Gear. So what you need to do is basically slide this bad boy in. And then you can put in the original game. But yeah, I'm more like, look at this. We're going to get the stagging effect like the Sega 32X, you know. It's sticking out a little bit. Not a big of a problem. But what I do notice, like, it will not fall out that easily, to be honest. So I think it's not going to be a big of a deal. Something I really need to do is removing the plastic. Yeah, you know. Oh, I don't like doing that, but I need to. Let's get into the game testing and let's try some games. First of all, let's start with one of my favorite Mario games on the Game Boy. It's the number two with the six golden coins. Let me know in the comments what is your favorite game. The next only thing that we need to do is play the cartridge option and it boots up automatically. Okay, what it already shows in the, let's say, the tutorial, you can change out different kind of color palettes. And I'm going to say like changing between them is like... I really love this green looking one, but this black and white also does have like something special to it. Nevertheless, let's start a game. Another thing is like, holy crap, this thing goes really, really loud. It's absolutely amazing. And if you want to change the color palette, you can just do that fairly easy. So you do have like this weird like scan line going on when it comes to this. 
and I personally prefer to have like the black and white. It looks so much cleaner and smooth. And something I was really surprised by is just the way how this thing actually plays, how it comes to the D-pad, everything. It's absolutely great. Wow. But if you want to change the game, you need to first quit the game. Yep. Okay, thank you. Let's change out the Game Boy Color game. Let's play it. There we go. It automatically like forces into the Game Boy Color mode. You do have even some options over here. I just want to have like the clean look. Absolutely amazing. Okay, so the last thing I just wanted to check out when it comes to the original Game Boy games. Let's remove the Game Boy Color and let's add the Game Boy Advance. I must say the Game Boy Advance, I personally didn't like play a lot of the games simply because back in the day I basically was getting into PC gaming so I left the handheld scene so I did miss out a lot of great games. What you're already seeing, we do have like two black bars. That's one of the original settings. So with settings we can basically mess around with it if you want to. Let's say video, you can see like even flame blending can be adjusted, you have like the three options, sharpness, size can be changed out, you can even like get a full screen if I want to, you know I can mess around with it if you want to when it comes to that, but let's set to normal settings. But here we do have like the option to use the back buttons and I can say like the experience is interesting. So if you're going to press here at the side, you can see like it's a different construction of button. But at first I was afraid there's not going to be anything I could do about it and this thing is going to be absolutely horrible for Game Boy Advance. But surprisingly, actually when playing, I'm just instantly like thought that it's going to be one of the better Game Boys to play my games with. And it looks amazing, it plays amazing, I do need to get used to it, but again I, I didn't play that game that much, and I've been playing for some time now and I can say that I really really enjoy myself with some Game Boy fans on this thing. The final thing I can test out is of course the Game Gear system, I was very glad to get myself the option to get the upgrade because Game Gear is one of the systems I've played a lot back in the day. Here like the options for like LCD and LCD plus modes. I can still remember that I wanted to have this game as a child, but I was always disappointed only having like eight characters. But I do have now like I basically like resting my fingers on the adapter because when you're going to implement the game gear you can see like you cannot really put your fingers on here so that's in my opinion a little bit of a downside you don't really need them like this is so bad <laughs> we have like a scorpion that is like green color looking like but I was also wondering, like, what happens if we're going to put in a multi-game card? So FPGA technology is basically like mimicking the original system. So this doesn't need to be any problem. And it isn't really a problem at all. Indeed, you can just boot up your multi-game card and just play your games like this. So cool. Oh man, revisiting this game, I've played so much as a child. Tailgater is one of my favorite games and it's so much fun to do. It's kind of funny, when actually playing this game, it's like we're going to whip everybody, because yep, it's a whipping gator. So you need to basically clear every single chest, and always in the last freaking chest there is a key to unlock it and go to the next stage. It's so funny, but also freaking annoying. The only thing is that I didn't test out the hard case, or I didn't before. I just wanted to check it out just to see how it actually is. I completely understand. It's also more like an, I think, a nostalgia vibe, because back in the day, the Game Boys also came in like these plastic cases. It's of course a very nice safe way to transport but also display your analog pocket. 
to be honest i really have like a sore like a sleeve or something I can just put it in i'm not a big fan of this thing just going to be honest it's cool for display but that's it and to keep it dust free buying this product was absolutely a very expensive purchase and is it really worth it for you that is something you need to decide and just going to be honest there are so many different ways to play but this is just one of the ultimate ways you can just add every single game boy game boy color classic and if you're going to have the attachments different games like game gear it's fpga technology so in other words you just don't have any input lag or other weird stuff going on it's really great like i have no idea like that it was that good the overall quality when it comes to the audio i am flabbergasted the docking mode is absolutely great and later on just wanted to check out what we can do more with it because i think with the sd card you can even like load up new different fbga possibilities and make this thing an absolutely emulation beast let me know in the comments what you think of this device thanks for watching and it would be great to see you in the next video